Um, so now we have the base stocks. In about 1997, there was a litigation that went to court between Castrol Oil Company and Mobile Oil Company on the definition of synthetic. Um, the process of making a Group 3 base stock, the way that they purify it, it becomes so pure, it's, a refine, it's actually refining, still into the definition of refining, but the purity is almost 100% saturation to the point where it resembles, the behavior resembles a Group 4. And um, the Group 4 is the is a PAO, poly-alpha olefin. It's a created molecule, a created a reactor. They get every molecule comes out the same. No big ones, no little ones. None of them have long tail, short tails. They're all the same. Whereas that's not necessarily true in refining. There's still, there's still some um, of the uh, of the molecules that are not absolutely the same as others, and there's still some impurity left in it. Now, most of the oil companies today that make... One, okay, I, I need to back up. This was because of the process of the Group 3, and because of its um, re resembles so closely a Group 4 in a court it was allowed to be defined as synthetic. So now we have a synthetic oil that's refined, and then we have a PAO. When you go to buy a, a synthetic oil, and it has somewhat of economics to it, like a castrol or a <coughs> penzoil or valvoline or Quaker State, the only way that they can achieve that is by using the group 3. It's a synthetic. It meets all of the synthetic definition. So they're not cheating. It's not, it's not um, something that uh, shouldn't, be, shouldn't happen, but, but it is a synthetic, and it has become, now that it's been around for a long time, um, it has become a building block that can be used by everyone and meet the synthetic requirements. PAO is a 4, and then the 5 is created from either alcohols or acids. And uh, they're, they're derived from animal fats, um, the fatty acids of animal fats, or the, or the vegetable like soybeans, palm, I mean, there's a number of different sources um, that are feedstocks for making the uh, di dibasic acid esters or the polyol esters. This material here so you can see it's pretty viscous. This is called a viscosity modifier this material here is actually a blend of a very light oil and the rubber, the polymer rubber. And you can see that it has very, it's very, very viscous. What they do is they'll, they'll make a polymer rubber out of a gas, polymerize it into a solid or a near solid, then they'll chop it up in a chopper and with heat and agitation and mixing a very low viscosity base stock, what we call 100 neutral, very low viscosity, with that, that in that bottle is about 90% loop 100 neutral and about 10% solids. So you can see how thick that stuff is. That's the material that you add to, to the base stock to increase the viscosity up to the particular SAE grade that you're targeting. So you, so you now you have you have an oil that has a very unusual, different character into it because it has 
a lot of adhesion that you've built into it, and a lot of cohesion, which is the ability of the oil to stick and hold itself together, that it didn't have naturally. So now you have an unnatural uh, situation with motor oil where it has better ring seal than just the base stock by itself, um, more film depth. <coughs> um, the other interesting thing about it is that it does an automatic adjustment during its time that it's being subjected to temperature. When it gets, when you mix that material into a base stock, when it goes down in temperature, it really doesn't doesn't really thicken up or drive itself like it would if it was by the base stock by itself. Um, so that when at low temperature, you still have good pumpability at low temperature, but then when it, what happens when it gets hot, that material is like little tiny coil springs, and as they, as they get hot, they expand. Well, it makes another adjustment that keeps the oil from just totally thinning out, like it would if it was just pure base stock. That is what they call a non-Newtonian fluid when that happens. Because Newton's law was a, a constant loss or a constant gain on a linear line. It's always, always a straight line. It always loses and gains the same. Every base stock loses and gains the same. When you put this material in it, that, it makes an adjustment within itself. That's the material that allows us to make a multigrade. That's how a multigrade is made. Without that, there was no such thing as a multigrade. So that's, if you take that, a base stock, and then this is the other, this is the other, this is called a PCMO package. This has detergent, dispersant, Oxidation inhibitor, anti-wear, anti-foam, corrosion, and rust, all built into one package. And you take that with that and this, and that's the oil. Would that's that it. be would that be like an ad pack? And that would be like an ad pack. Actually, it's um, designed specifically for the industry. And there's a number of different ones of those, and each one has been gone through quite a few millions of dollars of testing to get the to get the rating that they meet. Blah 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 blah. Meets all these different specs from Toyota and from Honda, and from General Motors and Ford, and and on and on and on. And it's a list of about 30 different things that it has to adhere to and comply to in order to be certified. Once you put that in, mix those ingredients together, then that can be called a API rated oil. This is the motor oil guide. Now in the old days, the SA, SA oil was the first one. That's the one that still had no additive in it. This is before 55. And then in 1963, they started making compliant oil. Actually, it was from 55 on up. Then they started using additive systems to control. You have all kinds of control mechanisms. So, because before that time, and I'm ashamed to say <laughs> that I can remember it. No, mm -hmm. no, anyway, it ages me pretty good. But I can remember some of the old cars that when you pull the pan on them, there would be just a big hunk of junk in the pan, and the only way that you could ever get it is just scrape it out, even even in the valley covers and the rocker covers and the pan, anywhere where the oil sat, it would just be total coke or just hard residue or rubber 